Hey, what's up everyone? It's me, Natasha, and I'm back with another video. In my last video, I talked about how to actually use your spiritual jewelry with your intention. And now I want a dedicated video on how do you actually care for your spiritual jewelry? So how do you cleanse it? How do you charge it? How do you activate it with your intention and energy? So if you're interested in learning how to actually do that for yourself and your practice, then please keep watching. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you guys can show me your support. Um, and please, if you do have any questions regarding how to cleanse, charge, activate, and care for your, you know, amulets and spiritual jewelry, please leave it in the comments below and I'll be happy to get to it when I am able. But let's just move right on into it. So obviously you want to be mindful of the material of the jewelry that you are working with because obviously materials could have sensitivities to some methods that you could be using and working on it with. So for example, uh, this is a copper bracelet. I love using copper in my practice and for myself, but I know that if I get this copper wet, it's going to turn my arm green and it's going to rust or whatever. It's just not going to be good. You know, it's, it's going to ruin the integrity of this material. So that being said, I may not want to cleanse this particular um, jewelry with water or Florida water or anything like that. So you want to be mindful of the materials of your um, jewelry. So keep that in mind. But I'm going to give you guys some generally safe methods that you can use to charge your jewelry regardless of what material it's made out of. So um, I'm going to say the obvious one first is a smoke cleanse. So when you are cleansing your spiritual jewelry, the obvious go-to is to smoke cleanse. So you could use your favorite incense or roots or resins, you know, incense cones, whatever, burn your own um, loose herbs to use the smoke to cleanse the residual stagnant energies off of the jewelry. Even if the jewelry is brand new and no one has ever worn it before, you have to keep in mind that your jewelry, it could have absorbed from transit to the delivery of the store or to the delivery of, you know, the place you got it from to your house, however it works, you know, it could have absorbed residual energy from traveling. So regardless if it's brand new or not, if it's been worn by anyone else or not, it's new to you, used or not, you want to cleanse them. So a smoke cleanse, um, generally it's not going to hurt any sensitive material or anything. You know, you're just using the smoke to cleanse. Another um, good way to cleanse your um, jewelry is selenite. Selenite is a type of crystal. Um, this is one of my go-tos. You can um, take your jewelry and wave it over like this until you feel that it is cleared, if you're sensitive enough to feel the vibration. If not, you could kind of sit this on top of a desk or a, um, a shelf or whatever, you know, you're able and just leave it on top of selenite to, to, to cleanse or even to charge really. Um, it's a high vibrational crystal. So the only downside about selenite is that it itself cannot get wet. So if you have a humid place or sweaty hands, things like that, you want to be mindful. But I love using selenite to cleanse my um, my jewelry, especially the ones that I wear on a daily basis. Um, yeah, so I like to sit these on top or just wave them over. Another way to cleanse your spiritual jewelry is to put them in a bowl. Um, a regular bowl and you can fill that bowl with like dry rice, uncooked rice, um, salt or soil. Now again, remember about the material that you are working with, some metals or um, crystals, whatever, cannot be in salt. So be mindful of that. But in itself, rice, salt and soil um, are earth and earth is very cleansing. So I like to utilize that when I am able. Um, I also like to put my jewelry outside um, and let the wind pass through them, especially if I'm at the beach or at the park, um, especially around here right where I live. It's just we're very coastal, so we have a lot of winds, and I like to use the wind to take pick up the breeze and carry away the vibrations that's on my jewelry. Um, but do keep in mind it does have to have a good steady breeze. You know, it's not it shouldn't just be like a 
Like you want to see um, actual branches moving along. Um, another way you can cleanse your spiritual jewelry is with the rain. You can collect rain water um, and, and, and let them cleanse or spray it, you know, whatever is best so you fit. But remember, some materials cannot be in water. So um, some crystals will literally um, break or dissipate in water, has sensitivity. Um, some metals will rust. Like, you know, like if you're using real gold or, you know, uh, silver plated whatever that's going to be good with water um, but if you're using stuff like copper or you know like maybe nickel you know like not real like protected you know it could tarnish keep that in mind um, and the last method I would say that I like to use for cleansing my jewelry is actually to use the power of trees and plants sometimes I will leave like my amulet like if I have like a new amulet or um, ring or whatever like a new piece of jewelry that I bought I will actually like to cleanse it with selenite and my and smoke and then I'll place it underneath the tree and I'll also say you know tree please cleanse this um this jewelry for me on my behalf so I may use it with my practice I like to work with trees in my practice so I do have an established relationship with uh, the trees in my yard and I work with them and energy work and all that but those are the ways that you can cleanse your spiritual jewelry so smoke cleanse selenite um, rice salt soil uh, wind rain um, and trees or plants so those are some generally speaking ways that you could use for most of your jewelry but keep in mind of course the material of your jewelry so you don't ruin the integrity after you're done cleansing your jewelry for whatever method best works or you know see fit the next thing you want to do is to charge your jewelry and there's different ways you can go about it charging is for the purpose of okay i i got the energy that was on this piece of jewelry and now i need to put a charge in it an energy in there so it actually has the mechanics to do what i need it to do it needs to charge like a battery so there's different ways you can go about it i like to use copper tools in my practice to charge my jewelry um, this was actually a birthday present. This is a copper um, gemstone tree. I currently have some um, jewelry on it that I wore during a session earlier when I was doing mediumship and um, long distance uh, Reiki for a client. So this is a copper tree. This is the copper and it has gemstones. This is a fluorite base and an aquamarine uh, gem chips. It does not have to be this combination, but copper in general is very conductive. So it's good for charging. Um, you can use like a, a copper uh, tree. You can have a copper pyramid. They make ones that you can sit in to meditate and ones that you can just like sit on top of a desk and put like, like your plants or crystals underneath and you could charge them with that. Um, you can also use sound frequency, um, you know, whether that's um, a bell, you know, or maybe you want to, you know, use a singing bowl to um, cleanse, you know, sound frequencies. You could be as specific and detailed to pick in the frequency that you want it to be charged with if you want to go that far with it. But sound in general can be used to move the frequency and the energy of there. Um, okay you also can use light light to charge your spiritual jewelry i like to use the full moon or maybe um during noon the sun if i'm going to use the sun I'll, I'll do it at high noon where it's at its peak if i'm using the moonlight i'm going to pick the full moon when it's at its peak you know there's different properties for each the moon will charge your jewelry with intuition and you know, and creativity and female qual like divine feminine qualities, whereas the you know the sun's going to be the opposite, the divine masculine, the you know manifesting strength, courage, you know type of energies, the doing. Um, so it's up to you how far you want to go with the light, but I do like to use the full moon quite a bit to charge like my um, tools as well as the the jewelry that I wear on a daily basis. Okay, now because I am a Reiki practitioner, I will also say you can use Reiki, of course, to charge your spiritual jewelry. Base, you do have to be certified, you do have to be trained and certified in Reiki to be able to do it. Um, like to, you have, like you learn to train how to do it, and you also have to be attuned to be able to channel and do it. They open your centers a specific way, but it's basically channeling source energy 
to um, channeling source energy through me to charge and to whatever I want to. Um, and the last thing you can do is you can use herbs and crystals to charge absolutely your spiritual jewelry. So let's say, for example, I want to charge this black tourmaline necklace pendant with protection. I may put a bowl of protection herbs and crystals so it can charge in there for that specific intention. So I'll put like cloves and bay leaves and, um, gosh, um, black tourmaline and tiger's eye you know like I would put all the protection herbs and crystals that go with that intention put it in a bowl and just let this specific jewelry sit overnight in that so it can charge with those properties um, but make sure if you are using that technique for the herbs and crystals that you are also charging those herbs and crystals for your intention so that it can imbue and charge um, your spiritual jewelry okay so after you're done cleansing and charging your jewelry, you're not done. You got the energy, you know, you cleared the residual energy that was in there, the old energy, and you put a new charge in it. That's great. But now it's time to actually activate it for what you want it to do. So after you're done charging it, there's different ways you can go about activating it. Um, my go-to way on how to do this, I'll, I'll use the example of my bracelet. So let's say I cleanse, I charge this, and I want this to be activated for the purpose of amplifying my energy work. That would be one of the intentions, one of the intentions that I could use for my copper bracelet. So if I was to do that, um, after I'm done cleansing and charge, I would hold it in my palm centers. Um, and I like to close my eyes when I do this, but you don't have to. And I like to say my intention, push my intention into the jewelry. So I'd like to close my palms over it and say my intention as if I'm speaking my intention and putting the energy for my palms into this. Part of it is visualization, part of it is focused intention. Um, I like to speak this out loud. So for an example, I could say, copper bracelet, I charge you with the intention, I charge and program you with the intention of amplifying my energy work practice. May you keep me a clear channel for my work so mode be or amen or what whatever works like whatever wording works for you but that's basically the principle of it you're putting your intention and energy into this and if you want to you know depending on the material as well i could also anoint this with protection oil now because this is copper i would not recommend getting this wet by any means um this has like a like a um this has like a fabric cord for this black tourmaline. So if I want to anoint this with oil, this isn't going to hurt it none. Um, but yeah, you go as deep as you want with this. So for activating, you can say a prayer, a chant, an affirmation. Um, um, you can anoint it to activate it with, you know, dress it with a certain property or um, mixture that you made yourself. But that's generally how you care for your spiritual jewelry. You can't just put it on you know, and expect it to work. So you want to cleanse, charge, and activate it. And how often should you do this? I would say it depends how often you use your shit, you know? If I'm using this, you know, if I'm, like, for my daily jewelry, if I'm using it on a daily basis, I'm going to cleanse it on a daily basis. But I'm also in a lot of people's energies on a daily basis anyway as an intuitive healer. So I would say use your own discernment. Um, the best way I can describe if you're, you know, if it needs another charge is, you know, is it working the way you want it to? Are you getting the same effect, the same energy off of it? Does it feel like it's like kind of low vibrational? Like it's kind of going mm, like dying a little bit. Notice the subtleties, you know, the subtle energies, the frequencies, the, you know, how you react and feel around it. Because you'll generally know like, oh, this is dead. Like, I don't know if you guys like, like I can literally hold a crystal and feel in my hand how much of a charge it has. If you can't, maybe work your way up to that but generally speaking that's how i like to gauge my jewelry just make sure you're taking care of it um there's different ways of cleansing charging and activating i'm just simply sharing um some general tips on anyone who does not know this information if you need me to elaborate or clarify um or add to this let me know feel free to let me know what you're uh, questions are but thank you guys for watching um take care of your jewelry with intention um whether that's your amulets or rings or whatever make sure that you are 
using this for your own empowerment, healing, alignment, manifestations, and pick jewelry that will amplify or work for your intention or just boost you, your own empowerment. So blessed be everyone.